So now we're going to take that basic blink application and modify it slightly. Uh, so let's go through this code again. We got commenting up at the top. And now the next first command is basically creating our uh, LED pin, which is set to pin 13. Let's add another line here and we will create another variable called LED pin 2, we'll call it. Actually, let's call it 12 and we'll call, we'll leave that one as pin, yeah. And we'll set that to 12. So this will use pin 12. You can comment that if you like, do forward slash forward slash and then your comment LED pin 12. Now we'll come down here and uh, in our void setup function, we're going to do pin mode and we're going to do the name of the uh, pin we created up here, which is LED pin 12 comma and we're going to make that an output pin rather than an input pin. Close our brackets and uh, our parentheses and use a semicolon to finish that line. So we've established what pins we're going to use and what those pins are, that they're outputs. And down here we have our write to the pins. So here we have our command. This is writing to pin 13, turning on the LED, waiting a second, turning off the LED, waiting a second. Let's lower this down. I'll put this at 500, which is a half a second. Same with this one. And what I'm going to do, just to make things easy, I'm going to copy and paste a line there. And I'm going to set this to pin 12. And then we're going to need to copy and paste this line down here. And we'll change it to pin 12. So what we're doing here is we are writing high to pin 13, which will turn the light on to its fullest brightness. And then we'll wait a half a second. Then we'll turn on the other LEDs and turn off the original LED. Wait a half a second, turn off those LEDs, and then turn on the original. So we're going to get alternating flashes. I have my board connected. Let's compile. Oh, we've got an error here. Let's see what it's telling us. Let's, it's saying error negative line 2. Oh, right here. We forgot to put a semicolon. So semicolon to end that line so it knows that it's a new command. Now we'll compile. Done compiling and upload to board. Now let's go and plug the board in and hook up our LEDs and see what we've got. Here we are back at our Arduino board. We just load our code to alternate LED blinks. And so let's test it out. I'm going to plug in my LED, uh, the shorter pin to ground and the longer pin to pin 13. And you can see we got a flashing light just like we did before, only it's going faster because it's now flashing at half a second intervals instead of one second intervals. And now I'm going to take another LED and I'm going to put the long pin into pin 12 and I'm going to try to cram the, the ground into the same ground pin as the other one you, we get. If I hold it in there, alternating flashes. Obviously, this is inconvenient trying to shove them all into one pin. That's where the breadboard comes into play. So we're going to take our breadboard again. We're going to go uh, one red pin to 13, another red pin to 12, and we'll put a black pin to ground, and we will hook these up on the board over here. I'll put a positive there. That's pin 12 a positive here, pin 13. I'll put ground over here and then I will also jump this ground over to here. So as you can see you can use the same ground for multiple uh, pins. So now I can take my LED and I will shove it in to the corresponding pins. Actually let me move this one over so it's a little bit closer. There we go. And we got one flashing LED and now I'll do the same over here. Once again, let me move these a little bit closer. There we go. And once again, we got our alternating flashing LEDs. And as before, we can continue to add LEDs to the breadboard. 
like so. And now, instead of trying to cram four LEDs into three little pins over here, we have plenty of room on the breadboard. So as you can see, a breadboard is a needed device uh, when you're trying to design something, and we'll be using a lot more in the future. And the other thing I want to quickly look at today is this. It's the Proto Shield. It is something uh, I bought in a kit and assembled myself, soldered it all myself, and it was my first real soldering project. And what this board does is after you assemble it, you take it and the pins match up with the pins on the Arduino. So now I can slip this in here and it's connected like so. And then your breadboard, which actually has a sticker that you can peel off on the bottom there, can sit right on the board like that. And it gives you a lot more uh, uh, 5 volt pins and ground pins to work with and makes it a little bit easier to jump your stuff to a board. Uh, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna try not to use this too much in my tutorials, just in case my viewers don't uh, cough up the extra fifteen dollars to get that kit. Uh, that they can still follow along. But anything I do with a breadboard can easily be converted over to the uh, Proto Shield. Another thing we want to look at today is uh, this is my second uh, soldering project. This is the Borduino, uh, which can be found at. Uh, Lady Ada's website. I'll put the link in the description. Uh, this is where I bought most of my parts so far. This is a board of her design and basically it is uh, essentially the same exact thing as the Arduino board, only smaller. Um, I've got the power plug here. They also have a USB version. This version I bought a special cable that goes on these pins to program it. But essentially it does the same exact thing that the uh, Arduino does, just in a smaller format. And the nice thing about this is all these pins on the bottom, it makes, allows it to sit right into a, uh, a breadboard so that uh, you can run your wires right off there. So uh, this is something uh, that maybe in the future if I ever build another one, which I'm sure I will build another one, I'll do a video on. Uh, but it's basically, if you buy one, follow directions on her site. She has step-by-step -step directions. and. Uh, very easy to do once you get the hang of soldering. I suggest watching some videos on soldering because uh, it took me a little while to get going. If you actually look at my board, you can see where I started and how ugly it was and how nice it was towards the end. Um, so these are things that we can look at in the future. Just wanted to give you a quick look at that. And uh, so we've messed with LEDs uh, twice now. Next week, we're going to move on to servo motors and controlling servo motors with uh, our Arduino board. Hope you're enjoying these tutorials. Visit filmsbychris.com for more video tutorials like this and visit Lady Ada's site for, uh, for kits that you can buy for the Arduino and for ordering your Arduino parts. Have a great day.